Hey everyone, it's Dr. Calkins with our last installment of week 14, chapter 9, stoichiometry. So we come back with a video uh, showing you how to do those empirical formula percentage kinds of problems in the, that are scattered throughout. So when we look for those, just remember the two definitions. Uh, empirical formula. Empirical formula is something that gives you the lowest reduced multiple of the answer, whereas a molecular formula is, could be the same, but oftentimes it's some higher, uh, but it's the real formula. So it's the one that has all the atoms. So for example, here we could have something like, uh, uh, so for example, like a C6H12O6. Here we have uh, glucose's formula, whereas down here we could just have CH2O, a carbohydrate. So it's one to two to one. It's one to two to one if we were to reduce by six. So this is a molecular formula that has a higher multiple. This is a empirical formula, which is the lowest reduced. So when we do calculations, what we're gonna get is empirical formulas because these have the same percentages, they have the same ratios. This one's just a higher mass um, version of the same thing. So let's try an example. Uh, a good example is uh, like 41 in the homework. Uh, if you have 2.78 grams of iron and you have 1.19 grams of oxygen, what's the formula for the iron oxide compound? So basically, if we have this FeO, what are they? One well, our definitions earlier from this chapter, we know that subscripts are just mole ratios. So if we can convert these to moles and give a ratio, hopefully they're whole numbers. If not, we can very quickly find whole numbers. In order to get moles, we go to the periodic table. The periodic table is definitely your friend in this chapter. We know in one mole of iron, we can look on the periodic table just like in one mole of oxygen. We can look on the periodic table. We want grams of iron to cancel, top to bottom. Grams of oxygen to cancel, top to bottom, just like before. On the periodic table, we can find iron's mass at uh, 55.85. And for oxygen, we can find its mass of about 16 if we round up. Close enough. Now we're gonna get moles of iron. That'll go here. We're gonna get moles of oxygen, that'll go here. That's not a mole ratio yet, but it is moles, and that's half the battle. We can get a ratio afterwards. So 2.78 in your calculator, divide by 55.85. You get this tiny number of uh, about 0.05. So 0 0.05, 0 0.05. For oxygen, we take calculator 1.19, divided by 16, we get about 0 0.074, 0 0.074, so here's moles, we need a mole ratio, we're going to take a smaller one of the two, which is 0 0.05, and divide it by both, that'll give us a ratio of each, so this will just reduce to be one, so that's good, unfortunately we reduce this one, we take 0 0.075 and divide it by 0 0.05, we get about 1.5 to round up. And this is like an empirical formula, but empirical formulas need to be whole numbers. This one's not. So we have some multiple, and it's some multiple to give us the uh, answer we want. So this can be any number. If you take it by one, it's not gonna change anything. It's gonna be one to 1.5. But if we take n equals two, we would times the two, times the two, we get Fe2 and then double of 1.5 is O3. So this would be iron three oxide, or we call it ferric oxide. And that's how you can do uh, empirical formula problems. Sometimes they give you percentages, just uh, as long as the percentages add up to 100, you can use the percentages as grams of the exact same thing that we did. The hydrate lab practices this quite a bit, uh, which is the experiment coming up uh, later in this chapter. Um, so just know that if you have grams or percentages, you can use the periodic table to get the moles. Moles go to mole ratios. 
if we're lucky, you get whole numbers. If you're not lucky, then use a multiple to get to whole numbers like we did. If you have to go to three or four, that's fine. Uh, as far as the multiple goes, we didn't have to go very far to get all whole numbers. So this is the empirical formula. It can't be reduced any further, two and three as far as they get. But for say four and six, so Fe4 and O6 could have been an answer, uh, but that would be a molecular formula because it's a higher version. The only way to know the difference is to have the molecular weight, which we do not have in this problem. The other idea in this chapter is to find percentages. So what we can do for an example like this is if we have Fe2O3, we can uh, take the piece and divide it by the whole. So if we take two irons and divide it by two irons plus three oxygens times 100, that would give us the percentage of iron. And in reality, this is a faster way to solve these problems. Because if we knew that the question up here had a percentage of iron, we just have to match each formula's percentage to iron, and that's a whole lot faster than going through this process. So we're using the law of definite composition versus the actual formula. So we're actually using week two instead of week 14, which is much, much faster. So in this situation here, we need to use the periodic table mass. So again, iron was that 55.85. Uh, so when we divide, uh, we have two times the 55.85 again, because that's part of the whole. We have the three oxygens, which are about 16 each, together in a parenthesis in your calculator. So PEMDAS is followed. So there at the calculator, we have two times 55.85, hit enter. Divided by open parentheses, two times 55.85 plus three times 16, close parentheses, it equals. Here's our decimal. When we times it by 100, we get our percentage of 69.9, so about 70% iron. So let's say that this was uh, choice B in a homework problem. And choice A would have said FEO. So we could have had to do this kind of problem, much like we did on 41. You might have multiple answers to choose from. How do we know which one? Well, you could do this long problem and then solve it, but that takes about 10 minutes per problem. Or just like this, you could just take iron divided by iron plus oxygen, so piece divided by the whole, times 100. So iron here, um, 55.85 divided by 55.85 plus 16, close parentheses times 100. And let's say, uh, let's find this percentage real quick. So 55.85 divided by, open parentheses, 55.85 plus 16, close parentheses times 100, we get 77.7%. So if the question says, who is 70% iron? Well, you go through A and find that it's 77.7% .7 iron, so it's not the answer. You go through B and you find that it's a perfect match. You don't even have to go to C or D, you already know the answer. Because the question asked for 70% iron, we proved it by using law of definite composition, by using the percentages to match the percentages. And even if we have to do two or three of these percentage problems, that's a whole lot faster than doing this entire grams to moles, moles to mole ratio, mole ratios to multiples of mole ratios, just to get an answer. Uh, and we hope to not make a mistake. So doing percentages through law of definite composition from week two is a whole lot easier and faster than doing uh, empirical formula problems. So if you'd like to save time to enjoy life, I would do percentages because they're faster and fewer of these empirical formula problems are good. They show unit cancellation like we want, but they do take a while. So when you see a percentage problem in the homework, um, match the percentage faster than taking the percentages to grams, then to moles, then to moles, and then to mole ratios, and then to some multiple that makes a whole number. Uh, could take quite a while. Both will work, but percentages are faster. So see you next time for week 15.